Hey team, this video is a follow-up scanning video to my in-depth tutorial on developing film. If you finished my film developing course, you are in the right place. As with that video, this video will be a video that's an extended cut to talk about a lot of the topics of scanning and the whys of what I do. So I have provided a table of contents and markers so you can skip around and find each section that you need to hear and go back to and, and, and try to get dialed in on a certain section. If you are just finding this video and you stumbled across it, my name is Will and I'm a film photographer on the Central Coast of California. A lot of people have seen my film developing video and this is the follow-up video. So if you're just joining me on the scanning video, welcome. And I think there's a ton of film videos on my channel that I think you would enjoy watching. So we've got our negatives all nice and dry from our photo flow trick, and now it's time to share those with the world. No one uses dark rooms anymore to enlarge their photos. They are using scanners and scanning methods. Now, there are a few different scanners and scanning methods out there, but in this video, we're gonna focus on my method in depth and in the future, I do hope to show a few more of the other methods and I'm planning on shifting my scanning method in the future as well. Now, of course, like my other video, I wanna be very thorough here. There are tons of videos out there that tell you all the basics and I want you to know all the information you're gonna to need to be scanning at home and I want it to be clear and easy to follow. Scanning your own film is a little tedious, especially with the method I'm gonna show you, but if you follow the steps, and gain a general understanding like the developing video, you will be able to handle this on your own and get some great results. So there are generally three ways film photographers are digitizing at home. The first and most common method is using a scanner. There's a ton of scanners out there on the market, but the go-to and the one that I use that's budget friendly is the Epson V600 scanner. Now you just can't use any scanner. You're gonna need a scanner that shines light through the negative. It's gotta have a light on the top and on the bottom on both sides. This video will talk specifically about the V600, but a lot of the Epson scanners are very similar and you will have a similar process. The second method for digitizing is growing very quickly in popularity in the film community, and that is that DSLR or mirrorless camera in taking a picture of a negative. This is the DSLR scanning method. This method can be cheap or pricey depending on if you already have a nice DSLR camera. Uh, I, I don't recommend this method for new shooters if you don't have a nice digital camera already. Getting all that stuff could be costly for you. Lastly, there are the production scanners. These are the guys that own a film lab quality scanner at home that costs thousands of dollars. I know only a few people that are doing this. I'm looking at you, Linus, and his camera. This also includes those automatic scanning things you get on the market. Those are clunky, really expensive sometimes. And they do offer high quality scans, but uh, for the price, it's just way too difficult to get into as a new shooter. Again, I probably will cover those things in the future on this channel, but I really want this video to be entry level basics with one of the most affordable methods of digitizing on the market right now. At the moment, I'm currently using the V600 scanner. I do own a digital camera, but I have not transitioned to DSLR scanning yet due to the cost, the cost of the holders. I also don't have a macro lens yet and I don't have a light. There's just a lot of little things that I need to get for that setup. I just haven't dialed in yet and I've got my V600 working and dialed in. Out of the scanners, the Epson V600 is not the highest quality. There are higher quality ones, but they get up to like closer to a thousand. I think the Epson V600 is a great deal. I actually got mine used for $95 and you can get one new for about $230 USD. Again, it does the job and every beginner and intermediate should have it. Um, I would give it like a 3.5 out of five stars. It's just in that right pocket of price versus quality. Okay, we have our film developed, we have our scanner. Now we're gonna need to grab some scotch tape, an air blower, some film storage sleeves. Uh, that's gonna store your film after, a binder to hold that in, and then we're ready to get scanning. So now that we have the things that we need, now we gotta talk about the software. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the included Epson scan software, Silverfast, which is a free download link with, that you can get with your Epson scanners, and Negative Lab Pro, which is a $100 conversion software to use with Lightroom. You should get something like Lightroom as well if you don't use it already. If you don't want to use the whole Adobe suite, I think you can get Lightroom for like $10 a month. 
You can use your phone or another editing app, but they won't work with Negative Lab Pro if Negative Lab Pro is a method of software you want to use. Keep watching this video to see which of the methods you like best, and there are other softwares out there. These are just the ones I'm going to be talking about in this video. Again, I'm going to be talking about a lot of different scanning methods in the future because I think there are a lot of different ways you can do this and a lot of different ways I want to try out and explore in my film journey. And one more thing before I get started is a talk about dust. Now, many people on YouTube are going to get mad at me for not using like the white cotton gloves or whatever, but I tried those when I started out. Yes, they prevent fingerprints from getting on your film, but they also introduce so much dust and fibers, it's hard to get them off. So I just grab my film by the edges and don't worry about it. Never had a problem. Just don't put your greasy fingers on the middle of the picture. You'll be all right. Also, don't lay your film on anything dirty with fibers. I dropped my film on carpet once and I could not get the fibers off. If that happens, you can try to rinse it with PhotoFlow and sometimes that works. Just try to have a dust-free environment for scanning and get yourself an air blower. This is super funny because I'm in like my garage and it's like the dustiest environment. So sometimes dust is cool. The Epson V600 comes with two film holders, both for 120 and for 35 millimeter film. They are very flimsy, but they hold pretty well when you collapse the top on top of them. To load these holders, the film must be face down. You can read the text on the edge of the film to see which side is the front. You just slide the film in the slot and close the cover. Try to make sure that your film is flat in there. Sometimes the 35 millimeter film will bow. You can fix this by letting it sit for a day or two in a sleeve in a big pile of heavy books or something like that. If the film bows and touches the glass, it will cause Newton rings. I'll discuss that in another section in just a little bit. If it does this, just try to reset the film and wait for them to flatten with your books. For 120, there should have been included a black little card and you slip that little card on the side of the film that is bowing and it helps flatten that. I've found this to work really well. Now, everybody loves film borders. One of the big things that I was excited about when I started shooting film was film borders. And it's kind of the only reason that I got a flatbed scanner was to get those film borders. I mean, we're shooting real film. I want to see those yummy, yummy borders, you know? So to do this, we just need to slap that film right on the scanner bed, face down. Now this can cause Newton rings way easier than the bowing of the film, but if you let it dry and flatten, it usually doesn't happen. And skip to the anti-Newton ring section to learn more about that if you have those issues. Just find the center of your scanner and line it up with the top. Wipe your glass really well and tape down your film. That will keep it flat. When we scan, we want to scan the whole image to get that juicy scan. Newton rings are a pain in the butt when scanning on a flatbed scanner. They are when the film touches the glass and creates this halo of rainbow colors. Editing this out is hard and it is very frustrating. This can happen for a few reasons. One of the main reasons is the new film shooter rushes the drying time and tries to scan it. You gotta at least wait a few hours for your film to completely dry. Now I don't use anti-Newton ring glass, but you can buy anti-Newton ring glass and lay it on top of the film and that supposedly gets rid of it. A lot of people do use that. I think it's pretty expensive, especially with a scanner that's already $200, adding another $100 to $200 on top of that is a lot. Some people take this even further while getting two anti-Newton ring glasses and sandwiching it. There's another method of adding liquid. Uh, it's just a lot of extra work that I just don't think you need to dive that far into with the V600, but you can go that way if you'd like to. First, we're gonna clean our scanner bed and clean the surface of any dust or anything that's on it, uh, smudges or anything like that. And I've linked down below a little cleaning kit you can get for it. It has a big cloth in it, a little spray bottle, and that really helps get off all of the smudges that are on there. So we're gonna open it up, take our cleaning cloth, and wipe it down really good. And get that dust off, get those smudges off, clean that top glass really lightly. That's going to get all the smudges off. Then we're going to be using our air blower, which should also be in the kit. That's going to be keeping the dust out from when we continue the process. The first thing we're going to scan is 35 millimeter. So we're going to take our 35 millimeter with the words facing down. We're going to place it into the holder really nice like that. Put this top part back on. 
just like that. Do not touch the film. You can touch the film on the edges. Again, I don't use gloves for this because it introduces way more dust. And we're using section A. And this little tab, I like to hit it with air already. I already see a little bit of dust. A little bit of dust won't kill you. But this little A tab lines up with A. Settle it down in there. Give it a couple more blows while you close it. And then you're good to go. Okay, let's dive into the computer and talk about the software we're gonna need. You're gonna need to go on the internet and download the drivers for your Epson Perfection V600 photo scanner. I'll leave a link down below where to find this. Now, when you come down to drivers for Mac or Windows, you are going to be able to find it here. You will need to download those drivers and it will come with Epson scan. And if you see right here, it says download SilverFast SE with your serial number on the Epson V600, you can actually get SilverFast for free, and I'd highly recommend that. So uh, that'll bring you over here to the SilverFast website, um, SilverFast SE8, and you'll click down to your scanner. You'll enter your hardware serial number right here. You'll check it, and then uh, you just download it right there. It has a couple of things that you can see how it runs. Um, you're also gonna need, if you're gonna go Negative Lab Pro, you can go this route and you're gonna need to buy this, this is 100 bucks. And as we go throughout this tutorial, you can decide if it's something that you're gonna want. If you like the flow of Negative Lab Pro, um, I definitely really like it a lot. Uh, so if you really like that, it's 100 bucks USD. Um, there's also Film Lab, which is a newer one. It's an annual subscription, or you can go month by month. $200 lifetime. It's a lot more expensive than Negative Lab Pro. I haven't used it personally, but a lot of people really like it. And I think there's some other ones out there, but these are the ones we're going to be working with today. So once you have all those, you're going to go ahead and delete Epson Scan because I can't stand Epson Scan 1 and I can't stand Epson Scan 2. We're not going to work with that since we have SilverFast. We're going to go with SilverFast. You also might want to download Lightroom. If you're going to go the route of Negative Lab Pro, you're going to need Lightroom because Negative Lab Pro is a plugin for Lightroom. And I'm going to talk a little bit about things that are basically the same in all editing programs, except for Negative Lab Pro being a plugin for Lightroom. So we got to turn our scanner on first, and then we're going to open SilverFast 8. Okay, SilverFast opens up. It's showing the V600 plugged into the USB. We're going to go in. It's going to show the images from last time, and there's a lot going on here. We're going to come up here to pre-scan, and we're just going to let it do a pre-scan to show what's on the scanner. This takes a little second to scan, and it's going to give us a rough look at what's sitting there right now. Okay, we've got our images here. They're pre-scanned, and we're just going to focus on this one, and we're going to work just in SilverFast first. You can do everything you need to do in SilverFast if you need to. You don't have to go to Lightroom at all. You can actually do it all here, but the workflow is really slow because the scanner is actually really slow and that's not SilverFast's fault. So we're gonna take our first box and drag it to just inside of the image. And we can adjust that in a little bit. And we've got transparency up here. And then this says positive. That just means it's positive right now. This is exactly what it is. We're gonna switch that to negative and it's gonna specifically hit our negative. Now, this is actually readjusting for wherever you put it. So we need to put it specifically where we're trying to adjust right now. That's why we're trying to be inside the box. So we want it inside the box. And then we're going to come up here and hit this button. And 48 to 24 is pretty good. We're not going to mess with these HDR rolls. Um, and the frame is fine. Okay, we're going to scroll up here to the top of this. We don't want a TIFF, we're looking at JPEGs right now. We're gonna use one of these in a minute, but JPEG right now, we wanna scan it. 3200 is the best this thing can do. You can do the 6400 scan, but it's not that, that much better. Okay, and then you can name it and change the spot where it's gonna scan to. So right now we're gonna do Moro Bay. We're going to put this just on our desktop for today. Okay, so on the left side, there's a million little tabs here. I'm going to close them right now. And you also have these buttons up here. So you can open your histogram. 
You're gonna open your gradation. This is all very technical for film, for just photography stuff. Let's zoom in on this and let it scan it a little better for us. Again, this is why the workflow is not the best. It takes a long time to shift things around like this. Okay, that actually doesn't look too bad. And we're gonna open up our histogram here. And our histogram is kind of showing where our light is. There's a lot of light. So there's a lot of, to the right is light, to the left is dark. So if I raise the darks, uh, this is kind of the end point of where the darks are gonna be. You can kind of darken your image that way, bring in a little contrast and vice versa. You can brighten your image uh, coming in at the top. And you can also move your midtone around. Your midtone actually um, is a really good slider for you to dial stuff in. I use that one a lot. So I'm liking this sort of more moody one like that. So this top one, Denistometer, we're not gonna use that. Navigator, we're not gonna use the navigator. Picture settings is our first one here in this list. Um, I already dialed in the histogram. That's usually the first thing I start touching. And then I go into here. You can also adjust the midtone there. Pull that down a little bit. You can add a little bit more contrast, remove a little bit of more contrast. And yeah, so I like a little bit less contrast. And that saturation looks a little crazy. So I'm gonna pull that down a little bit. The negative fix, you can mess with this one if you want. It kind of tries to find uh, the film stock you were using. So I was using Kodak, I was using Ultramax, uh, and it was 400. So it helps try to dial it in, and it did add some pinks to the background. That's pretty nice. You can mess with the exposure a little bit right here. Yeah, I liked bringing it down a little bit, actually. And then the tolerance of what these things are actually adjusting. If you've seen my final image of this, it was from Negative Lab Pro. I didn't use this program on this. So then there's the histogram, and the gradation is something that we would use in Lightroom. You can actually pull up the shadows and make them flatter if you want. If you know a lot about this, you can mess with that here, and it works really well. And again, you can mess with your mid-tone here as well. I would say this image looks pretty good. Something that I'm seeing is a lot of digital noise that is from this scanner. It is not the best, but it's also not your full resolution yet. So we're gonna come up here and hit scan on this. And it's gonna take a long time. Okay, that took a long time. It should be on our desktop, here it is. And there's our image. We could call it a day with our single image here, but from far away, you actually can't really see that noise. It looks like a good image. Contrast is a little high. I might've gone a little too far on it, but I like it. It actually looks pretty similar to my Negative Lab Pro scan. So here are those two scans side by side. There's definitely a lot more contrast, I would say, in the Moro, or in the Silverfast one. Saturation's a little bit too the, through the roof there. Uh, the colors aren't too accurate. I could have spent more time trying to dial that in, but if you come over to the Negative Lab Pro one, I really like this image. I think it's punchy, but it's not like too much in your face. You have some softness in the distance. And I really like it a lot, actually. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I like Negative Lab Pro. Okay, that was scanning a single image in Silverfast. What if we wanted to scan the whole roll in a, what they call a batch scan? So what we can do here is head up to this frame tool. And there's one called Find Frames. And then Slide. And then film strip, 35 millimeter holder, click that. It's gonna find all the frames that are there and go ahead and drop like a basic change on all of them. Uh, I don't have any in, the, in this side right now. It, if I did, it would find those two. And what you can do is you can go in, adjust each one of these, zoom in on them, do exactly what we just did and dial them in. And then you're gonna come up to image up here and batch scan. And so when you go into the batch scan, it will scan all of those. You'll wanna name them to Moro Bay and you'll start an index number and it'll index them all with numbers behind them. So that's a great way to batch scan and not have to sit here and scan each one. So that's, a, that's the way to do it in Silverfast. 
I'm not gonna dive into how to dial in a 120 photo. I think that's basically just how to use Silverfast. I'll show my workflow for Negative Lab Pro on all the other ones. But I will show you how to get the film borders on Silverfast as well. Okay, so we just looked at Silverfast. Does not look like my Negative Lab Pro scan and it doesn't look exactly how I want it to. So I can actually open up an editing program like Lightroom. This is gonna be called Color Correction and it's totally okay to do. Okay, I've opened up a new project here in Lightroom. I'm gonna to go to Library and I'm gonna import from our desktop that Moro Bay image. I'm gonna bring it in here, go to Develop. So we're gonna to try to dial this in a little bit more. Now, if you're unfamiliar with editing programs, definitely go look at a Lightroom video or an editing program video. I'm not gonna to dive too much into how to use Lightroom. I can do that if you guys are interested. Go down in the comments, comment down there if you want me to do a Lightroom tutorial video. But that's a totally different subject, but I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what I'm doing here on the right side and how I'm dialing it in. You can do this again in a lot of different programs. I'm just using Lightroom because that's what I like. Uh, you can get Lightroom from Adobe's suite of stuff. You can buy the whole suite. It's like 60 bucks a month. It's a lot if you're not uh, creative. But if you already have it, school discounts are 50% off and you can also get just Lightroom, I think for $10 a month. So we've got it here. Um, we're gonna start at the top and dial our warmth in and bring that down a little bit. So the temperature a little bit cooler. Um, it seems a little pink, so I'm gonna pull it to the green just a little bit there. And then exposure is a little bright. I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. And the contrast is a lot, so I kinda wanna pull that back. Highlights are kind of a little popping too much. Pull that down. Shadows can come down a little bit too. Whites, yeah, just everything's blown. I'm um, with the blacks, just a hair. Um, I don't really mess with texture and clarity and decays on film photos. Kind of messes with the grain a little bit too much. And then you've also got vibrance and saturation. Really, I think the saturation could come down a little bit and maybe a hair of vibrance. So we've got that same curve. It's called tone curve in Lightroom. So that's there if you know how to use it. Um, again, to get that lifted black, you can kind of draw yourself a little S-curve here if you want. And then put a little dot right there and then go whoop. And literally lift that black. You see what the blacks are doing? It's a look. Some like old films do that on their own. So editing, you don't necessarily want to take that out and you don't necessarily need to add it in. So I, I don't want that. So, so we're not gonna mess with the tone curves. You can dive into the color here. I feel like this pink is popping a little bit too much so I can pull that down a hair, but I'm kind of losing the green. I don't even know if it sees green. It doesn't even look green in this image. So you can do that. And there's tons of other things you can do in here too. In the sharpening, this is where we're talking about dialing your grain in. The scanners and lab scans automatically sharpen and do things like this, but we can actually pull that sharpening up a little bit and that will bring out some of that grain. If we zoom in here, I'm pinching with my fingers. You can see that grain there. And if I pull it back, the grain kind of washes out pull it up, there's grain, but there's also some digital noise. You know, look at that, there's digital noise. That's not actually there, off and on. So I like to pull up a little bit sharpening. It does help your image a little bit. And again, lab scanners do this already. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this color slider all the way over and it turns all that digital noise, see the color and gone. This is one of the, this is a hack I don't hear people talking about too much. You can just flip that up and now your grain is white rather than digital noise and it helps your image a lot. We've got lens corrections. If you feel like your lens is bowing in and out, should be used very slightly. I've got a little bit of vignetting so I can actually kind of pull this vignette up a little bit there and it fix the corners there too. So there's my image that looks a lot better. To export this, all I'm gonna do is go file, export with that image selected. 
I'm going to throw it on my desktop as well. So desktop. So that's the folder I'm putting it into. I'm going to name it right here. Moro Bay compared. I've got quality at full for JPEG and resolution 300. If you go any higher than this, it's not really that worth it that much. Uh, and that's pretty much it for all these settings. You don't really want to mess with anything else. So export that, and there it is. It's on the desktop. So this is our first image that we did with just Silverfast. And here is a little bit more corrected Lightroom on top of that and edit on top of an edit. Now this one looks super vibrant. This one looks a little bit more, more muted, but this one's a lot more accurate to what I saw. And then we can compare that side by side with our future Negative Lab Pro image. I can't guarantee that I'm going to nail this same scan for Negative Lab Pro, but yeah. So here's three completely different images that you can get. And ultimately, they're all different and they all they all have a vibe to them. I would say the most accurate one is this Negative Lab Pro image that I got. And I'm going to show you how to use Negative Lab Pro next. So we're going to leave our Lightroom open. We're going to come back to Silverfast. Okay, this is going to be our workflow for Negative Lab Pro. We've got our images here, and we're just going to batch scan them all. And what you need to do is select each one and change some settings. But instead of that, I'm going to come up, I'm going to uh, hit frame up here and delete all. And we're going to start on a new one. Okay, so now I'm going to just come in, select one frame. And before I do the automatic finding of all the frames, I'm going to come up here and change negative to positive, and we're gonna go back to the looking at it as a negative. Now I'm not gonna do anything to this image. I'm just gonna crop it. I'm gonna crop it a little bit over crop so I can get the edge of it, and I'll show you why we're doing that in a little bit. We're gonna do 42-bit HDR raw, and we're doing raw so that it's a lot higher information that's being captured there, and it's not putting any of its own settings onto it. We don't need to name it because we're going to batch scan this. So we're going to raise our resolution to 3200. And we're going to change it to DNG. I like DNG a little bit better than TIFF. If you read the Negative Lab Pro page, I, I think it recommends TIFF. You can dive into their descriptions there. I'm not doing a Negative Lab tutorial right now. I just want you to see how to do this in Negative Lab Pro. Um, definitely dive onto their website check out more details on that. I will do a Negative Lab Pro video at some point. I just wanted you guys to see my scanning workflow. We've got DNG. We've got our quality all the way up to 3200. And then we've got our image. We're going to come back up to frame. And we're going to do that film strip 35 millimeter holder. It's going to find our frames. There's our six frames. And it cropped them a little bit. So again, I want to over scan them just a little bit so that I can get the edge, and that's gonna help us with our white balance when we're in there, okay? That looks good. Okay, now we're gonna batch scan, and we're gonna come up and put it on our desktop. So Moro Bay, Bay Raw Scans, index starting at one, and then I'm gonna hit scan. That's gonna take a little bit. Okay, our images are scanned. We're gonna open Lightroom back up, and we're gonna go to import, we're going to find where we saved it. Moro Bay Raw on my desktop. We got to open that up even more. Moro Bay Raw Scan. There it is. It looks really weird as a DNG. We're going to import it at the bottom right here. It will come in as our negative. Move it over to develop. And there it is. I can click this button and show all photographs that we're working on. We've got this one and we've got this one. All right. So here it is. I didn't overscan it that much but it looks like there is a little bit right there. Again, by Negra Lab Pro, there's a free trial. I think you get seven days or 12 days. Oh, you get 12 conversions. So generally an unlimited amount of time. Uh, if, if you do some copy and pasting, like you can kind of extend that a little bit. Definitely try it out first. Uh, if you like it, you like it. I love it a lot. They're always updating Negra Lab Pro. There's a Facebook group. You can ask any questions in there. They're so helpful and it's a lifetime membership. So when you buy it, there's a very easy way to install it on your computer. It's a little harder for Windows. I do have it on my Windows as well. Definitely read their download guide and go through what's going on. 
Again, this isn't gonna be a tutorial for them today. Yeah, once you get that installed, either talking to them or looking at their guide, we're gonna come back over. So before you enter Negative Lab Pro, you need to grab the white balance selector. You're gonna grab it and you're gonna grab your overscanned edge. I didn't do a very good job of overscanning it, but there's a very little bit up there that I can grab. That's gonna get your white balance good to go. Once you've nailed your white balance, you're gonna to wanna to crop your image in and get rid of the border because it does throw it off a little bit. You need to crop it in just. When you press Control N, it's gonna open this little Negative Lab Pro box. You can move it around if you want to. Uh, so we're using a DNG, that's already good. I like to use the Nuritsu one. You can mess with the Frontier setting. These are like um, examples of the emulation of what that scanner could do. And then pre-saturation, I'll leave it at default. You can go high, I've done high before. You can go low if you want it to be a little more flat. And then border buffer, we're just gonna leave it at five. So we're gonna hit that convert negative. Again, it's gonna put my presets on there or my last used thing. It's not gonna look how we want it to. We're gonna hit this reset button. Okay, so there's my image with just a flat basic scan from Negative Lab Pro. We're gonna start at the top here. So I like to use the cinematic flat. It's a great starting point. Some people like the linear flat. A little bit different, but I'm usually going with a cinematic flat, but there's tons of these other settings to kind of get you going here. They're all very different, um, but that's awesome. Different ways to get down and edit your photo here. The linear flat actually looks pretty good on this one too. So I go between linear flat and cinematic flat. So let's do the cinematic flat. Okay, there, that's that one. Now we wanna get our white balance going here. We're gonna come down to white balance right here. This is Kodak. So we're gonna, we're gonna just go ahead and tell it that it's Kodak. It's gonna adjust a few things. It looks okay, but I'm gonna bump up the warmth just a little bit here and mess with that a little bit, the tint. Sunsetty hues, this was that sunset. Now we're dialing in up here, just like we edited before. We're gonna edit a little bit here. We're gonna come in, a little bit of brightness. It was outside. Um, a little bit of contrast removal, I think actually. Bring up the light a little bit. Maybe bring down the darks. And then you can just throw these sliders around. This is all up to you, how you feel the image should look. I'm gonna bring those blacks down a little bit, I like that, punching a little bit. And you can mess with the white clipping um, if you want to. Now you can dive in even further here, the LUTs, which is gonna be those scanner changing uh, features. I'm gonna go with, actually that natural looks pretty good. I like the natural. And then you can also dive in even further here with the mids, add a little bit of something. You can just mess around with these. This is your RGB and your cyan, magenta, and yellow, and you can mess with that in the mids, in the highs, and in the shadows. I'm gonna put a little bit of pink in the highs because of that sunset vibe. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so, and then go a little bit red because that sunset was happening right there. Yeah, that looks really good. You can come in, add blue to the shadows if you want. That brings out that green a little bit. Um, I guess that's cyan actually, technically. And then add a little green to the darkness down there. Yeah, that's starting to look really good. And you can have it pre-sharpened a little bit too. That's it. So now this converts it. Boom, converted. We can zoom in and it will render the image. There it is. So we also have that digital noise like I talked about earlier. We're gonna scroll down all the way to the detail section and the sharpening's on there, but the color isn't. So we're gonna slide that color, that's my little trick. And there it is. If you don't like this, you can dial in a little bit further, but if you move these sliders, this is actually based on the negative. You can come and see that, look at these crazy curves. And that's from Negative Lab Pro actually putting this on here. This is actually a negative and Negative Lab Pro has done crazy things with this to make it look like this. Now, you can mess with these just a little bit, but they're not gonna function the way that they normally do. They're actually inversed and they're a little weird too. So saturation, if I bump it up, it gets like weirdly red. 
and it's like not really removing or adding saturation it's just very bizarre i've dialed these in a little bit before but you gotta get to know a little bit backwards and really you can just open up that control in and you can open that back up and adjust it there if you want to i think this looks pretty good it does not look like my other one but let's export it and then put that one compared all right here is our our new one uh which i think would be the most color accurate out of everyone i've seen so far so here is our three here so this is silver fast and your image might not look like that i'm just saying that's what i got with a little bit of adjusting and then here's silver fast adjusted by lightroom and then here is negative lab pro in lightroom this literally is the most accurate one i can see um, these colors look really accurate these were green and that fade there was a sunset and you can kind of see this is a benefit of the negative that on this one on the right we were using a raw and these were jpegs that we were editing so you can see that there's digital noise and this kind of handled that digital noise a little bit better so this looks really good now i'm going to close out those two this is our negative lab pro so on the left is my edit this image the first time and on the right is negative lab pro these are both negative lab pro now why are these different now that comes down to the scan that comes down to a lot of different things these were scanned at different times you can see there's dust in different different places edited in a different time too i i'm in a different mood than i was at that time i personally think that the one on the right is more accurate and i'm making this tutorial so i'm trying to make something the most accurate i can but the one on the left is what I tend to edit for myself for my Instagram. That gets us into a conversation I'm gonna have a little later about what is editing, what is color correcting, and what is actually retouching. Because I left the grain in here, I could have retouched these images and removed some of that grain as well. So that's how I scan 35 millimeter using the actual film holders. Now I'm not gonna show you much more on the computer, but I am gonna show you how to load up 35 millimeter with the film border showing and how to put 120 on here and 120 with the film borders as well. So let's do that right now. So what we're gonna do with 35 millimeter is we're gonna ditch our actual film holder. We don't need that anymore. I'm gonna take it out. So if you want your film borders to show, that's one of the benefits of a flatbed scanner. You can actually get your full film borders, which don't show up if you're using a, a few of these other methods. So we're gonna take our negative and we're not gonna be touching the actual negative. We're gonna be touching the edges of it here. And we're gonna lay it down with the, just like we did, but we're gonna slap it down right in the middle there. Now it's gonna curl, it's gonna bow a little bit. And without smudging the glass, we need to center the negative kind of in the middle of thing you can fit two on here it's a little bit harder to do you need to really center it so that you can line it up with the glass here we're going to take some scotch tape put a little edge to it and we're just going to grab these edges here and i'm literally just going to grab the edges i only want a little bit on there i'm just holding this thing down this can introduce newton rings if you haven't let it dry enough or if it's just particularly bendy for now this works really well so we're going to close it we're gonna hit it with a little bit of air, and there we go. Let's pull it into Silverfast. So we're here with Silverfast. We're gonna pre-scan. Okay, now in Silverfast, we can see our images. The same thing that we did before, we're gonna take our block, we're gonna put it inside of the image, and then we're going to change positive to negative, and that's how we're gonna edit our photo. Now the trick here to get that film border is once you've dialed in the colors, you know, you've done the midtone, you've done all the things that you need to do, you've changed all the things that you want to do with this, you have to come in to negative fix. Once you turned off auto and CCR, then you can expand this frame to cover your whole image. That you want and we're gonna hit scan just like we would okay that took forever now i didn't edit this very well 
I just wanted to get the film borders in there. So there they are. And you can crop this image down a little bit more if you want. I left it pretty big, but yeah, you can crop this down more in an editing app or on Instagram or whatever. That's how you get film borders with just Silverfast. If you want the film borders using Negative Lab Pro, we have to scan it as a positive. You're gonna over scan it significantly like this. We still want that 40 bit HDR raw. We're gonna do a DNG, find a place to put it, scan it as a negative. All right, it's finished. Let's open Lightroom, library, import, and we should be in the same place. There it is, our weird image. All right, I'm coming down here. I'm selecting all photographs so I can see everything we've been working on. And I'm gonna go over to develop. Okay, and here is one of the problems with scanning on a flatbed scanner. You can see it even before we convert this. So it is a Newton ring. That is what that is right there. That's the problem with laying it down flat on your flatbed scanner. That can happen. What I would do is reposition it to try to make sure it works right. But um, for now, we're just gonna scan it right now. Um, but a cool trick is we already have Negative Lab Pro that we did this before. So I'm actually gonna just copy these settings and I can drop it on. So that's one way we can convert this. And then there's our Newton ring, which I can get rid of with a little bit of editing tricks. So there is that. But I also wanna show you how to do it without a little bit of help. So to get it similar to Silverfast, again, we're gonna grab our pipette. We're going to grab onto the film on the edge here, not on there, but there, that shows our white balance. Now we've got to use this crop button up here because all of that border will throw it off. And we're gonna to need to crop it in. We need to come up here, change our aspect to a custom and dial this in. Oh, it didn't do it. We have to crop it after we hit the white balance and then we're gonna hit our control in, convert the negative. It's gonna have the preset from last time which is on the previous image. Yeah, that doesn't look too good. We'll dial this in. Cinematic flat will come up, tell it that it's Kodak. Bump that up, bump that up a little bit. And there's the image. I'm gonna hit apply. I've got my image. Now I'm gonna uncrop it and go back to as shot. And there it is. That's how you do it. Again, I can come up with this little spot removal tool crank the feathering on it. Sometimes you can remove a Newton ring this way. Now again, the purists will hate me for saying that, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Sometimes you can see this from far away. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna crop it in a little bit to get the black out. And you can use this angle finder to adjust that a little bit. And then boom. There it is. So there's a quick one on Silverfast. There is a quick one from Lightroom. I didn't edit these very well, but I'm just trying to show you what you can do with the borders. So that's how you do the borders. So for 120, we're gonna take our negative and I'm gonna use a very old negative and it's kind of dusty. It's one of my first shots I took on a RZ67. And we're gonna take our film holder, we're gonna lay it down. Again, same thing, our words are gonna face down. We're gonna slide it into the end here, drop that down. Now it comes with this nifty card here in this slot, and that helps keep the bow and the bend down. So if I just close this right now, it would still be bending in the middle there. So I can take my card and I can put it right on the edge of it. And when I close it, it will keep that bend down. Now, again, there's a lot of dust on this. I can use some photo flow, clean that off and let it dry. But for now, we're just gonna roll with it. So I'm gonna slap that on to my flatbed. It goes on the little B section. I'm gonna hit it with a duster, close it. And that's all you have to do for loading the 120 on there. And it's the same process. We're gonna pre-scan. So we've pre-scanned, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna drag a box. We're gonna put it around it. You can edit this in Silverfast. You can edit this in Lightroom. 
uh, with Negative Lab Pro. And again, you want to overscan it if you're doing it in Negative Lab Pro. We've talked about how to do that. It is all the same. So it, since it's all the same, I'm just going to let you guys go ahead and see that yourself. Now, if you want those yummy, yummy film borders on 120, you, of course, want to take it out. Only grab it by the edges. Put your things back. Make sure you put things back. And you're going to do the exact same thing you did with the 35 millimeter film. Make sure things are dusted off. This one's a little bit harder to line up perfectly, but you can do it. You want to use the tape on just the very edge because it kind of messes up the scan. It like freaks out if it's not all the way on the edge. Boom. There it is. Again, this one's super dusty. Uh, I could clean it off with something else, but I'm not going to. So, boom. Line it up. Pre-scan it. Okay, here's our image. Looks great. I'm going to overscan it just like I did with everything else because I'm going to bring in a Negative Lab Pro. You can see how even with a slight shift, you can possibly not line it up right. This takes a little bit of time to learn exactly where it is. And notice you can't put too much on there. It can only really fit a few of these images. Some of the other scanners have a larger shining bed and this one just doesn't. All right, again, same thing. As it is scanned, we're gonna pull it in, import, more bay raw scans, there it is, the big jumbled mess. Move it over to develop, boom, there it is. All right, um, then we'll go into that negative lab workflow. We're gonna grab the pipette. We're gonna hit that white balance on the outside. We've got to crop it in so that the borders are gone when it's converting and we can pull them back out when we're ready to go. So control in, convert that negative and it's my wife and that looks very good already out the box. I'm going to just leave that for now. Um, we won't get too technical with this. All right. And once it's converted, we go back to the crop and we basically just uncrop it. I'll crop it to where the, you want to see those borders. Boom. And that's how we get foam borders. There we go. That's an awesome image. So that's how you're going to scan 35 millimeter and 120 on the scanner to get the film borders or to just use the film guides as a way to make it a lot faster. The film guides make it so much faster for putting it down and getting through stuff. And like we said, with the 35, it can find the film borders already. So those actually are pretty helpful when you don't really care about the film borders, but those film borders are cool. That's why we're doing the flatbed scanning. We really like that. So I've skipped around in this entire video on this topic of do I edit my film photos? And the truth is you just saw as we went through all this, the answer is yes. I think that it's super important to understand that uh, all these scanners are different, that all of technology is different, screens are different, so many things are different that are going to affect the image. You can rescan the image several times and it might be different every time. I am pulling images that I shot a long time ago and I bring them in and they just look different. That's not really a component of the scanner or anything. Even a dark room would be slightly different. Even a professional film lab could be slightly different. It's all going to be different. What we do is we need to edit and add a little bit of color correction to make our images look good. I don't think there's any faux pas in that, but I think a lot of people do comment and say, do you edit your images? The answer is technically yes, but at the same time, everybody kind of does slash intentionally or unintentionally. Even if you send your film off to a lab and never do anything to it when it comes back to you, that lab did some editing to it. I don't want you guys to get too caught in the weeds with that. I get caught in the weeds with that too, or I did when I started. So don't worry too much about that. What I really want you to think about is how to make great images. And hopefully I was able to help you today with that. Guys, this video has been a long time coming. If you've been following my journey from making the developing video, we bought a house, we had a kid and life has just been super crazy. That developing video somehow blew up and I'm just so grateful to every one of you guys that have been a part of this journey even before that developing video and then now since that developing video and I've been asking about this video. So I really hope that you were able to learn something from my scanning techniques right now. There are so many scanning techniques 
that I want to dive into in the future. One of the reasons why I wasn't able to get to this was I am eventually going to be moving away from the V600. I think it's affordable and great for beginners. I also think it's great for intermediate. As a flatbed, that's pretty good. But ultimately, for speed and for quality, you can get a better scan with a nice digital camera and digital scanning. And the problem that with that is, and like I've covered before, is that that's pretty expensive. And I think the V600 is a great scanner for beginners to dive into. So I am all about saving you guys money and getting more people into film photography. I think it's a great thing to do, and I think you can do it cheaply. Again, I said in my developing video that I got all my stuff and I'm able to develop film now for about a dollar per roll. If you buy this scanner and you follow my developing video, you can develop your rolls for about a dollar per roll, which is so much cheaper than getting them developed and scanned at a lab. Your results and your time will have to go into it, but I think ultimately there's a lot of gratification about that, that hands-on touch. It's awesome. And, and you could see in this video where we dove into messing with our images and making them look amazing. I wanna hear all about your developing and scanning adventures over the past few months. I know I've been away, but I'm back now. I'm putting out videos every week. Please leave a comment down below if you've gotten into developing and scanning recently. I'd love to talk to you all about that. You can always reach out to me on Instagram and even down in the comments. I will answer any of your questions that you guys have about this topic. Guys, I really appreciate all you guys being here with me. We are still giving away the Canon AE-1. Um, we're getting very close. When I'm recording this, there's about 50 slots left. Maybe by the time this video is out, there might not be any slots left, but I will be giving this away. I'm gonna announce the winner on Instagram and try to reach out to you on YouTube. Thanks to you guys subscribing to the channel and being a part of this team. I just really appreciate you guys. If you haven't subscribed or done any of that yet, please subscribe, like this video. YouTube loves to know all about people's enjoyment and engagement. Just thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next film video. Peace.